Welcome to the celebration of Mass for the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time from Assumption Church in River North, Chicago. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. God's time is near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Today's gospel, Jesus reminds us that there's a big difference in serving God out of fear and serving God out of love. Let's pause now and acknowledge our sinfulness and open ourselves to God's forgiving love. Lord Jesus, you reveal your vision for the church in parables. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you invite us to serve you with joy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. 
Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Happy are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Happy shall you be and favored. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Happy are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me bears much fruit. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibility. Come, share your master's joy. 
Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I've made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibility. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So, out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant! So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what that person has will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. So, how many of you feel sorry for that third servant? Here's this really rich guy who goes on a long trip and hands his money to three servants according to their ability. One got five wads of cash, and two got two wads, and one only got one. And the one who got five and the one who got two made a neat profit on their investment and were rewarded by the boss. But this third servant, who apparently didn't have a lot of ability in the first place, got thrown out in the street and left penniless for playing it safe and burying the money in the ground. And actually, burying the money in the ground, according to rabbinical law at the time, was about the most secure thing you could do, because banks were not always reliable. And according to the rabbis, if you buried an amount immediately, even if someone found it and dug it up and kept it, you were not responsible for the loss. So he played it safe. What's so bad about playing it safe? What's this parable trying to tell us? That greed is good? Is it endorsing capitalism or legalized gambling? Well none of those issues would have made any sense to first-century peasants. The point of the gospel is to tell us something about important about God and how we can become more God-like. And the first thing you always have to notice with a parable is to whom is the parable addressed. And it's addressed to the disciples. So he's not talking to the crowd. He's not talking to the general public. He's talking to those of us who have already committed ourselves to follow Christ. And he's also telling the story almost at the end of his public ministry. So he's telling it to us who will survive him after his death. How are we to behave as we wait for the Master to return at the end of time? What is supposed to be about in the meantime? And the second thing that you need to notice is the word talent. This is not the way we use the word talent now as some sort of ability or gift. You know, like if you have the knack for playing the piano, um, it's not about forcing the kids to practice the piano every day because you think they got rhythm. No, a talent was a unit of measure. It was a block of gold or silver, probably with a handle on it, because it weighed something like 50 pounds. And one talent would be the equivalent of about 20 years' wages for the average person, or maybe what you'd make in half a lifetime. 
So even one talent would be the equivalent of becoming a millionaire. And five talents would be incomprehensible to the peasants who would be listening to Jesus' uh, parable. And what's important to notice here is that the rich man, the Scripture says, entrusted his possessions to his servants. He's not giving them a little walking around money to play in the stock market or go to the track or Las Vegas. He cleared out his accounts and placed his fortune, placed his future prosperity in their hands. He trusted them with all of his valuables. So when you think about it, the rich man took the greatest risk by far. He could easily have sat on his money or buried the money or put the money in the bank himself and obviously could have lived comfortably ever after. But instead, he risked everything, trusting that his servants would be not just good stewards, good caretakers, but to use what they had been given creatively to bring about something better. And isn't that what God did at creation? You know, God had this really good thing going with the Trinity. You know, we got this perfect community of love. We're perfectly happy, perfectly in love, perfectly self-sufficient, perfectly united, perfect everything. But see, real love is never just turned in upon itself. Real love is always turned outward. It's always a blessing for others. Sort of like a couple in a really good marriage that lasts a long time. That their love is not just a blessing for themselves, but it extends out to other people. They're blessed and enriched by their love, by getting to know those people who are themselves in love. So love doesn't get used up by being shared. It grows and expands. Love is not like a tube of toothpaste. The more people you, you share it with, the faster it goes. Love's not like that. It grows. So God lo God's love grew. God's love is expansive. And so he created the world, and then he created us to be a reflection of him, to take care of the world and the people in it, and to enrich it by our love, by our creativity, to, the, to invest in our world's future. And then when you think about it, it's what God did again when sending Jesus into our world. He placed his own son in the hands of sinners in a sinful world. He gave his life to us and for us out of all proportion to our ability to appreciate it or to reflect it back. He gave himself totally and unreservedly. He cleaned out his accounts. So when you're thinking about risky investments and trusting blindly, God is the worst of the bunch. He left himself totally vulnerable because we're free to bury his love or to reject it. But he left it to us, his disciples, those who said we're willing to follow in his footsteps. He left it to us to go around and plant seeds of the kingdom that maybe others may water and still others may see grow. These are the things that people do who are created in the image and likeness of the Creator. So you see, when the third servant hops up and says, Here, Master, I'm giving you back what you gave me, God doesn't want it back. God doesn't want it buried. God wants us, His disciples, to imitate His unbridled generosity and take risks with it to do something with the message that we've been given, that the love we've been shown, the example of servanthood that we've been given, something to make the world a better place, a more just, a more peaceful, a more loving, and a more faith-filled place, to invest in the future of the planet and the people who live here. He trusts us not to trash the place, 
He trusts us not to be indifferent, not to be lazy, but to be involved, not to play it safe, but play it like he plays it. And I think this an important message to us in our time during this pandemic and a pandemic that is going to be getting worse and we're living under additional restrictions for at least the next month. Yes, our travels are restricted. We're supposed to avoid crowds where we're unmasked. We're supposed to wash our hands. But we're not asked to live in fear. We can't do things the way we've always done them. But we can take risks trying to do them in a new way. If we can't do something in person, we can figure out another way to do it. And here in church, you know, I never thought I'd become a televangelist, but we had to give it a try. We gave it a try to have Bible study on Zoom. How is that going to work out? Well, it worked out very well. How do we serve the poor now that we can't invite them to a sit-down meal? We have to find another way to serve and to care for the poor. We have to take a risk and try something different. We can't just hold the fort and wait for things to get better. Now, do all our ventures pay off? Certainly not. I can assure you that mine haven't. You know, in 37 years of ministry, I've seen lots of good ventures flounder and fall apart, and some of them ended up hurting and dividing a parish community, but also been blessed by ventures that succeeded against all odds. And all of God's ventures don't pan out either. You know, every person who fails to respond to the call of discipleship, everyone who goes down the path that separates them from the love of God, that's an investment that hasn't paid off yet. It hasn't paid off yet. But God doesn't stop trying. God doesn't stop taking the risk of giving us free will. God doesn't stop coming to us in the Eucharist in the hope that we'll come to Him. God doesn't bury His love in the backyard. Because love is always a risk. So our first reading talks about the good wife, or we could also say the good husband. He entrusts his heart to her. It's a reminder that marriage is a risk. Having children is a risk. Walking across the street is a risk. Getting out of bed is a risk. Even breathing these days is a risk. You can't avoid risk. But I don't think the master would have been angry at these servants if they'd taken a risk and not doubled their investment. He was just angry at the one who buried it who did nothing, who seemingly was indifferent to the world around him and was simply lazy. That made him angry, those who do nothing and never try to do anything. And see, this is why the third servant had what Lily had taken away from him. It wasn't that somebody snatched it away from him. It's really kind of like spiritual physics. See, when we, when we don't act out of trust and love when we act out of fear. His fear of losing what he had turned out to be self-fulfilling. If you bury love, if you bury mercy, if you bury justice, if you bury the good news of salvation, it disappears. It ceases to exist if you hide it and bury it. If we don't use it, it goes away. That's what happens when we operate out of fear rather than out of love. It disappears rather than grows. And how did this third servant get the idea that his boss was a harsh man who reaped where he did not sow? He's basically saying, my master, you're a thief. Where did he get that idea? Well, I think it has something to do with sin. You know, in the story of, from Genesis of Adam and Eve, they existed in a relationship of love and trust with God. But then centers, sin enters the world, and what happens, the first thing is they want to hide from God. 
all of a sudden, they're ruled by fear. They're afraid of God. God hasn't changed, but they've changed. And they've remade God in their image. They've chose to see God as a reflection of themselves. And I think that's what sin does. It distorts our understanding of God. We project on God the kind of person that we become. Back in 1960, you know, our Catholic Church was operating like a well-oiled machine. It should have been. We'd been doing exactly the same thing in exactly the same way for almost 500 years. But there were cracks forming in the foundation. The great secular movement that moved across our country in the late 1960s had already moved across Europe, emptying out churches and leaving them mostly empty. And Pope John the 23rd says, we've got to open the windows and let in some fresh air. We've got to take a risk and do things differently. He said, we're not on earth to guard a museum, but to cultivate a flourishing garden. So let's see if we can reimagine the church and its structures, and let's reimagine the liturgy so it better communicates the love of God to the people. And some of those ventures worked, and some of them, quite frankly, haven't worked out so well. But he took a risk. Pope John didn't live in fear of the modern world. And now our parish of Assumption are being invited to be part of this Renew My Church process. We'll become part of actively within the next year. And the point of Renew My Church is to get us, the disciples of Christ, to become more engaged in the mission that He left us and to ask ourselves what kind of structures best serve the mission that Jesus left us. How do we reimagine the church so that we'll be free to truly invest what we have in the world that God chose to entrust to us? And now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To the God who has called us to discipleship, we lift up our voices in prayer. For the church, that God will rouse our inner selves and help us avoid the numbing effects of consumerism, escapism, and indifference, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For an end to war and violence, that human hearts may grow in their appreciation for human life and for justice, which is the foundation of true peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are unemployed and underemployed, that they may find work that matches their talents 
and provides a living wage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For parents, that God will give them strength and patience as they guide and nurture their children through the challenges of the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom from fear, that God will help us to trust God's faithfulness and love as we live life each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are suffering from COVID-19, that they may know the healing touch of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God of all, hear our prayers. May the earth and its people be healed by the rays of your love and the wisdom of your spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Peregrine, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, the ministers, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At our Savior's command, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share God's gift of peace with the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For you, O oh Lord, my soul in stillness waits. Truly, my hope is in you. O Lord of light, our only hope of glory, your radiance shines in all who look to you. Come light the hearts of all in dark and shadow. For you, O Lord, my soul in stillness waits. Truly my hope is in you. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. From all that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's song be sung through every land, by every tongue. Eternal are thy mercies, Lord. Eternal truth attends thy word. Thy praise shall sound from shore to shore till sun shall rise and set no more.